Uh, I'm just going to begin by saying my next video will more likely be a lead off of the discussions of thoughts I've had here today. Um, I'll look at Jigga Vertov's Man with a Movie Camera from 1929, a very famous uh, piece of documentary film, just, just famous as uh, Nanaka North, you know, similar type film, similar era. Um, but I'll go into that film later on. I'll bring this up in relation to John Grayson. Um, who I'm going to be talking about today. I was considering making the next video before this one, but I decided that it's best to just go um, and look at the highly respected and commended film director, theorist, uh, Mr. John Grayson. Just get the cogs turning on his importance for documentary film. So this is essentially just going to look at a major figure within this type of film documentary. Um, you know, he's not actually that creative a person. He's only done, he's only directed two films, but he has produced a lot more than two films, um, which I've come into contact with over the course of my course. Um, one of them being Industrial Britain, directed by John Flaherty. Who created the previously mentioned Nanaka the North, um, which is well known as a complete fabrication of the film, but again, that's one we can go into later in the video. Um, but these two men did share a bond when it came to documentary, uh, and that's something I'm gonna go through in this video. When looking at documentary and the creative treatment of actuality, as, as Grayson has referred to it as, um, it's his own definition. It's important to understand that Grayson's influence goes beyond that of just regular documentary and even fiction film. Um, documentary was a term that he coined in 1926 in his review of the film Moana. Um, he's you know deeply he's deeply entrenched within the subjects of propaganda, um, as you know he's also a pioneer of the the medium. From my research, I found a number of examples of this, and it's not something that he particularly shied away from. Grayson's research focus was the psychology of propaganda, receiving funding from the Rockefeller Research Fellowship. He had a strong admiration for the work of Soviet filmmaker Sergei Eisenstein and his use of editing to create emotion and fear in his audiences. Specifically, the most notable work of Eisenstein's is B Battleship Potemkin. Um, I'm going to sign an article on the WordPress archives um, titled Battleships and Drifters. On Sunday 10th of November 1929, Battleship Potemkin, Sergei Eisenstein's rousing work of cinematic drama and revolutionary propaganda, received its first public screening in Britain at an event organised by the Film Society at the Tivoli Palace, London. Made in 1925, the film tells the story of the mutiny of the crew of the Russian naval ship Potemkin in 1905, an event celebrated as an inspirational precursor to the revolution in the new Soviet Russia of the 1920s. The screening was part of a program which also included the premiere of John Grierson's film Drifters, a documentary about heroic lives of North Sea fishermen. Grierson's film had a huge impact and created a template for documentary films which many others followed a success contributing to his reputation as the father of documentary. Grayson had seen Potemkin on a visit to the US and his style heavily influenced his editing of Drifters. Um, in the article they later uh, quote from it, so I'm going to also read the quote that John Grayson wrote about um, Eisenstein's work. We wrote about tempo, about images, about mass character. Crowds as personalities, streets, towns, peoples as corporate personalities. And all these things which cinema could do, the stage could not do. It appears in company with my own drifters, but I am not in competition. Eisenstein is a very great director and master of us all. So the next question is, why was Grierson so entranced by Eisenstein's film and mainly as Edison? The film shed a new light on history, transitioning reality to the screen, and did so using a technique known as Kuleshov editing, which was interesting enough the very first thing I was taught when studying film in college, using two examples, one being the opening scene of the Brazilian film 
uh, City of God, and the other being Battleship Potemkin. Um, Kulshav editing is deriving more meaning from two shots back to back than a singular shot in isolation. Um, essentially, if you have a shot of a blank, emotionless face, cut that to a plate of food and then back to the original face, you have a man who is hungry. If you then replace the plate of food with a coffin, you have despair, grief and possibly even regret. The face doesn't change, but your mental response to the sequence of footage does. Your perception of the scene and character can easily become altered through this edit, and this is a very useful editing technique which can very easily be applied to documentary, um, especially to the films of Grierson and Flaherty that were essentially government funded and used as a form of propaganda. Overall for this video I just wanted to give a small overview on Grierson, his interest in propaganda and how this uh, affected the early structuring of documentary, which will have certainly impacted um, on today's docu documentary films as well. Um, in the future I plan on looking into more specific films, but I could also do a second part to this video um, if there's anything new that I find and feel compelled to, um, to inform on. Um, so, thanks for watching.